Hello and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting Vlogs. Um, this is the first installment in a vlog about a pair of little fingerless mitts that I'm going to make. This is my mom's iPad, which was sitting right here, and I was like, oh great, now I don't have to get mine. Um, these are the mitts that I'm making. The Demirkin mitts, Demirkin mitts from Shetland Wool Adventures Journal number one. Um, there's another photo of them. So I'm making these in, oh wow, I can see the reflection of myself in the screen. That's really weird. There you go. So very um, sweet. Um, yeah, these came in the Shetland Wool Adventures Journal Volume 1 for, by Allison Rendell. But I'm going to make them in more than two colors. So the two colors used are blue and white. Um, and I'm making them in one of the color combinations that I came up with when I was using my color wheel. So this is, again, the, the vlogs here are sort of intended to just show how I edit my color choices um, and how I decide which order to use my colors and etc. So you saw the hat. Um, if you have been following these, you've seen this. It's right here. This is my Katie's cap. No, DeCrofter's cap. Shell Week 2021. Oh, Hobbs has been so bad today. He's been barking a lot. Okay, so this is Demirkin Mitts. So here's the colors. So this is a Jameson and Smith two-ply jumper weight in 203, light gray. Yeah. Oh, Hobbs. Hey, Hobbs, stop. No. Uh-uh. Hey, Hobbs, come here. No, he won't come here. He doesn't like me. Hey, buddy, stop. Yeah, we asked you to stop a bunch of times. You have to stop. He just likes to bark at dogs that walk by. He's kind of a dick. Um, sorry, he's sweet. He just is also not very nice. Okay, I've got orange. This is FC7 mix. These are all two play jumper weight. There's one that isn't though, and I'll let you know which one that is. This is FC55 mix, and this is 82 mix. And then I've got a navy, which is actually, um, this is, what's it called? BC, BC Bio Shetland, BC Bio Garn. So it's like a navy, it's heathered. It's also heathered. So I've got all these shades are heathered. Um, all of them are mix, mixed shades. 203 is a heathered gray. And I've got burgundy, orange. Oh, that shows up really nice, that dark teal. And then the navy. Okay, so I've decided that it's basically a big star on the back of the like hand. Um, and then inside there's like, you know, just like a really simple pattern. And then there's a little cuff. And this is why the mitts are interesting. I mean, everything is interesting from it, fair aisle knitting to me but the construction is really cool so you knit this cuff so I've done the cuff I did the cuff all in the navy and the white just to make it a little less crazy because this is a pretty small little motif there's only nine rounds in it um, and then and I'm doing the vlog right now so that you can see so you're gonna make a double cuff and so this is the outside of the cuff but this is actually gonna get folded over so again this is size two needles magic loop style Chowgu Red Lace. Um, it's my fair isle. Um, perfect match. Okay, so this is gonna be kind of crazy. We're gonna take that and flip it. So inside out, and you're gonna go back when you get there. This is how you construct many types of this kind of mitt. Um, and it's really cool. I just thought that I would make sure that everybody understood the technique if you were a little curious about this or you wanna knit it. So you're gonna go back over the same stitches you just worked and um, most patterns that do this will ask you to, to knit one round to create a pearl ridge here. So that's what I'm, because when you flip when you flip it, there's gonna be a pearl ridge made. So I'm just knitting her across. Don't pay too much attention to me knitting because again, I'm knitting through the back loops. This is my style. Okay, so after I finish this, there's a decrease round and then you're gonna rib um, with the main color, just plain main color, just on the inside of the cuff. And then that way, it really hugs your wrist in not in an uncomfortable way because it's ribbed. It's two by two rib. It's a nice, um, nice, get, you know, kind of not really tight rib. It's, it's kind of a, I don't even know the word that I'm looking for. You know, it's a relaxed rib. <laughs> we'll call it that. Um, and so once you're done with that, I mean, when you're done with the whole mitt, you can fold it whenever you want. You are basically going to knit that ribbing to the same length as this cuff. And then you're gonna fold the cuff so that the outside is facing outward over the ribbed section. And it just creates a double a double cuff, basically. So you're getting, it's just, a, it's a smart construction. You're getting something really warm that covers your 
uh, wrist in a double layer. One of them, one of the layers is hugging you. Um, and in order to make it even um, snugger, you're going to decrease a few stitches. Um, and then once you're all done with that, you start the, the mitt pattern. This one has, um, and this is my preferred mitten construction. It has like a peasant afterthought thumb, but you're, you're doing a little gusset that's part of the palm. So that would be um, traditional in selbu mittens. That's how you would make the, the thumb. You do a gusset, but it's not on the side of the mitt and you're not, um, yeah. Like sometimes when I made mittens, I, I did my own gussets or Monica, my friend Monica and I would like make our own and we would put the stitches on hold. I like to put the stitches on hold actually and then cast on over on these ones too because I learned that from um, Selbu Knitting, the course I took with Patricia and also the books um, that I have. And I think that actually works better than doing the afterthought um, or it's a forethought peasant thumb where you're, okay, now that's done. Um, so now I need to look at the pattern again. So I'm gonna stop the, the video, but um, yeah, so now there's a pearl ridge. You can see the pearl ridge there. So when I fold it over, it's gonna create like a natural spot to fold it, um, which is great. It's just, you know, makes it a little easier. You could probably even tack this down if you wanted to, once you folded it over. I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna do that unless I'm having an issue. Um, yeah, this is just sort of step one on my quest towards fingerless gloves because everyone likes finger, <laughs> not everybody likes fingerless gloves. My mom really wants fingerless gloves because she her hands get really cold while she's typing in her bedroom. Um, I also have a lot of organist friends who I feel like would like fingerless gloves for, because churches are freezing a lot of the time. And um, so when you're practicing, sometimes I think it's nice to have, and you don't want it to be heavy or itchy or anything. So Shetland is kind of a nice way to have like a really special thing. So for all my organist friends watching this, you're probably gonna get fingerless gloves. <laughs> I don't have that many organist friends. <laughs> I do, I just don't think they watch this channel. Um, it's probably a small, a small percentage. <laughs> um, anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you back for installment two. Okay, welcome to installment two of Demirkin Mitts of Vlog. <laughs> I showed no, installment one, so there's Demirkin Mitts. This is from uh, Shetland Wool Adventures Journal, volume one. If you get this um, publication from Shetland, they will send you, oh, I hate that noise. They will send you the downloads when you, when you purchase it. So that's one advantage from getting it from them. Although I usually buy it in the US um, just because it's easier for them to ship large packages, etc. Okay, so the last time we spoke, I spoke to you, I had done this cuff. Ah, okay, I'm gonna have to like grab this, sorry. I'm just looking at all my mugs and stuff. Okay, so I've just unrolled that. I was I was done with part of this. I was doing this this cuff and I was doing that ridge. And so there's that ridge on the inside and there's the ribbing. And then you start this color work on the hand. Okay, I'm like, sorry, I'm gonna put this back up. Ah, you're not seeing anything now. Sorry because I'm wearing this. Okay. So I've done this. Now you can see what it's going to look like ah, properly. And then there's the hand. It's just like ends all over the place right now. I'm going to weave them in. So, okay, I've chosen, there's a, a, the navy I used on the cup. That's the BC Bio Shetland. So it's a little thinner. It's a little different. Then on the hand there, I've got this first Peary that's an 82 mix, which is the dark teal. I have a few rounds of that, and then I go into the blue. And then I have a bunch of this purple. It's like a mulberry color, which is Jameson and Smith FC55 mix. And then my pop, I use this kind of tangerine orange. It's not tangerine. I don't know. It's bright orange. It's FC7 mix. There it is. Right there. Um, and uh, one thing I did notice, it it's, it's okay on the gray. It shows up right there, right there. It's really showing up. In the sun... This will show up or in um, over, overcast day that orange will show up as a pop um, if I were going to redo this I don't really want to rip it out I kind of like it it's fun you could do this in a little bit of a darker orange that would be fine too um, although this really this is how you get that pop is like doing something like this so um, yes uh, I'm trying to like move that so you can see so the star motif is taking shape you can see it there there it is this is again in just two colors and it's a much bigger pop 
One thing about this is that my vertical gauge is very different, I think. Maybe it's not, I don't know. So they're like here, that thumb gusset that they create, that when I tried it on right there, it was like way back down in this first purple band. It was too small, so I just kept going with the thumb. I didn't increase anymore, I just like kept going on that gusset a little bit, and I just switched it off at like round, let's see, where's my sticky that has the numbers? It'd be like, I don't know, round 22 instead of like round 15 or something. I did a bunch of extras. Um, that shouldn't affect anything. It's just going to, like, yeah, there's going to be more gusset there and less ribbing. That's, I prefer that fit. Again, I think it's because my vertical gauge is a little tighter. So I've got to finish this hand pattern on the back of the hand. This is a really nice little simple palm pattern here. I like this a lot. It's very easy. Uh, makes sense. Oop, I messed it up right there. That's fun. That's okay. It's on the inside of the hand. Oh, I probably just carried up a gray. Yeah, I think I know what happened. If you do something like that and it really bothers you, it was probably just because of the gray. Like, I accidentally split the ply in the round below, and so it was, like, still there on that second round. You can duplicate stitch to that if you want. But yeah, this is what it looks like. Okay, so I finished one mitten. I haven't done this little um, thumb yet, but this is finished. I'm sitting on the floor. Thought I needed a change of scenery. Okay, so I've got a cuff. I've got, this is all navy. Then I've got dark green and a dark blue. Both of which are pretty hard. To, it's pretty, I mean, you can see it now if I'm showing a close-up. There's dark green and then I've got a few dark green and then dark blue. Because those basically meld together, I did more rounds of this reddish purple and the orange. The orange is actually showing up pretty well on the camera. It's not as obvious as I want it to be. And by that, I mean, it doesn't stand out from the gray as much as I want. It stands out from the other three colors exactly as much as I want. Um, so, and you can see the backside too. The backside is, this is such a beautiful, neat little pattern. It looks like little, I don't know, rows of plants or something. So, it's gorgeous. Um, nice little finish here. It fits really well. Um, sorry, now I'm like, ah, I'm trying to put it on. <laughs> sorry. See my leggings there. Okay. It fits. It fits actually pretty well. Um, so what I've got basically here is both of these patterns here, this one on the palm and this one on the back are framed by these little, these lines that go along. There it is. So one thing that I noticed was that, as I mentioned, I had to do more rounds of this thumb gusset than, um, had originally been in the pattern just to get it to fit. Um, so if I were, it also doesn't come very far up my hand. If I were making this again... I would consider, or like not making this exact pattern, but if I were using this as like kind of my starting point for a new pattern, which I probably will, I mean, I like to um, alter patterns and put new spins on things, um, I think I would actually make a bigger um, snowflake there because there's room. You can see there's like two stitches there plus that one plus that one. You could expand this like three stitches in either direction, this snowflake. So this is probably, I think it's a 25 square snowflake. I could make that like 28, 20, even 27, 29. I could probably get away with adding an extra stitch on the side of these mittens, each side. Um, and that would make it longer. And then you'd have more gusset. This would come up a little farther. And this is just my, again, this is my personal gauge and tension because the vertical gauge is a little smaller, I think, because I use smaller needles. Um, because my horizontal gauge is looser. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm going to make the second one. I'm going to make a little thumb. But I'm going to continue developing this. Until I have, you know, this idea of this fingerless mitt. Until I have what I want. I'm going to try and do, uh, do separated fingers at some point. I am going to finish knitting my way through Fair Isle weekend. And there's, um, there's both wrist warmers and little fingerless gloves in that. So I'll end up knitting a little gloves at, at some point because I do want to try that. I just hate knitting mitten thumbs so much. So I can imagine the gloves would just be like such a struggle for me. But we'll see. Maybe it won't be so bad. Um, 
yeah, and I'm, you know, maybe I'll experiment knitting a full-length mitten at some point. I am the queen of mittens, or I have been in the past in a former life. So we'll see what happens, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with this. It fits really well. Um, gorgeous pattern. I like to knit those patterns in like the annuals and the little journals and, and things because, you know, they don't have that many projects in Ravelry and it's nice. Like you have those patterns, you should use them. I like them a lot. Yeah. And it's a nice way to like use little bits and bobs. You really hardly need any of these, uh, of these colors to, um, to do this, especially those orange rounds are so few. You just need this tiny little scrap of that in order to make those. I also didn't mention this um, in the last video. Instead of doing the traditional um, Shetland way of making these, I did a, a more like the Selbu style for the thumb gusset. So I did the construction the same. It's just that instead of knitting a piece of waste yarn into that hole, which is also a little small, I would consider widening that a little bit um, by a couple stitches. But yeah, instead of knitting waste yarn in, I put those on waste yarn, these, this line of stitches, and then cast on in pattern over the thumb hole. And that allows you to try it on. So if I had just knit waste yarn in, I would have had no idea how high that gusset would have come up on my thumb. Whereas I could try it on and make sure that it was fine in this case. So yeah. Okay. That's it for now. I will come back when I have a finished pair of bins. <laughs> Bye. Okay, here's another installment of this vlog on Demirkin Mitts by Allison Rendell um, from Shetland Wool Adventures Journal, Volume 1. Um, this is a good light to look at them in because you can see the orange as part of the pattern without it just kind of getting swallowed. Um, and I have done, th they're both done. I did the thumb holes and um, yeah, so naturally... Uh, they're not on my hands. I will maybe just stop this and put them on my hands so that I don't have to like put this down. Um, but yeah, okay. So the last time we talked, I think I was talking about how I extended this thumb gusset a bit because it had initially just said to go to about there. I extended it about seven rounds, I think, all the way up to here. Um, then it said to do 15 rounds of the one by one rib to continue the thumb. I did 12 rounds because, um, you know, I did an extra long thumb gusset so that it actually came up higher on the thumb. So that was just too correct. Um, okay, so let's look at this color scheme. Yeah, so here, here's what we've got. We've got navy down here. Looks good with the gray. Works. These are not blocked, by the way. Um, okay, so we've got green and green, and you can really hardly see the transition from green to blue. However, you can massively see the transition from blue to purple and then, of course, to orange. So what I did here is I've done, I did, th this is three rounds and then there's three more rounds of green and then there's three rounds of blue and then there's five rounds of purple. So it, I did that on purpose. Um, I could have extended the blue, but because the green and the blue blended so well, I actually decided to do the five rounds of the purple so that it would look a little bit more like three distinct colors because there's no way it'll look like four distinct colors. So that's something to think about. Um, you know, make sure your colors are contrasting from one another. Um, obviously, the blue, purple, and orange are heavy contrasts, high contrast with each other, uh, but the green and the blue were not. So that's something to um, make note of. But yeah, I, I again, I really like this sort of symbol pattern on the palm. Uh, easy here. One thing I wish that I had done differently, and again, I was following the pattern here, um, is that I made one here in the background or pattern color instead of the background color. And if I'd made just these two stitches in this row and the, in the gray instead of the blue, that would look more, um, you know, uniform, but I did it on both myths. So not a big deal. Yes, they are identical. Um, okay. So yeah. I'm gonna try one on so you can see what the fit is like now. Okay, so it's on my hand here, and here it is. Total, I um, unrolled the cup so you can see how it's constructed. So I've got, when it's on, obviously I've got this folded over. So if I folded that over, that's the right side. But then this ribbing will really hug your wrist, so it's very comfy. 
Um, and then here I can, you can see that it comes up about, yeah, halfway between my, ah, the base of my knuckles here. And then these knuckles up there. So, yeah, that's pretty good. It's comfortable. The thumb, again, it doesn't quite hit that knuckle. Um, but it's a, you know, decent amount of thumb is covered. There's still a lot of range of motion in the hands. Um, and one thing I noticed is that this um, this finger was actually not very difficult to do. I really dread making thumbs, um, typically, just because they're annoying. Um, but this one was pretty painless. Uh, it was ribbed. And I wasn't actually trying to make it fit a thumb, which, like a whole thumb, which made it easier because oftentimes I make them too short or too long. Um, so I think that made this one a little more pain, or a little... Yeah, slightly, yeah, more painless, that's the word I was looking for. Um, but it also just made me realize that it wouldn't be that hard to knit gloves, or fingerless gloves, or whole gloves. Um, so um, that's going to be my next my next challenge in, in the world of mitts. Um, yeah, there might be more color play hat with hats, but before that, but yeah. There's also, I will say there's an inconsistency here. I did two by two rib there. Two by two rib there, that's one by one rib. That just hugs my thumb better. Um, but yeah, I like how they turned out. I think I'm gonna I think that I'm just gonna keep them. We'll see. I'd made some of the Marie Wallen Scaries mitts um last fall. Yeah, last fall. Um for DC for knitting outside and I actually wore them a lot, so maybe I'll keep these ones. Um but yeah, we'll see. I get most of my knit wear away. Because I just don't have room for all of it. But yeah. I'm pretty pleased with this. So thanks for watching.